everybody my name is Tim and this is another real ideal gear review today we're looking at the Casio a 800 H I call it the gray man watch this is the watch that I think blends into just about any environment it's an everyday watch it's a cheap watch loaded with the basic features that just about any digital watch should have so let's take a look at this watch we'll go through the five things that I review on a watch that I am interested in and then I'll come back to you with a final assessment an overall score for this watch Right, let's get started. We'll do the first five things, which is size, fitment, finish, accuracy, legibility, and loom. As far as the size go, the Casio A800H, I call it the gray man watch because it just blends in. It's, it's a low profile watch. You're not going to attract a lot of attention from the bad guys out there as far as thefts and things like that. Um, so as far as the gray man goes, the lightweight poly case resin band or strap is, uh, it's a great great feature overall that you just you really don't know that it's on your wrist i love wearing it because of that feature alone it's definitely going to fit the small medium large wrists your extra large wrists if you're a you know big guy out there that has you know big beefy wrists this may be one that might be a little bit too small for you as far as just the case dimensions go the strap itself has a lot of adjustment holes so it may fit by the strap but the case may be a little bit on the small side totally up to you um it's similar in dimensions to the G-Shock. So when you put the G-Shock and this watch together, um, you're going to notice that lug to lug, it's about the same size. And even the width is the same size. When you put it next to the Royale, the Royale is a little bit longer lug to lug. So the Royale actually is a little bit bigger of a profile on the wrist, um, you know, across your wrist. As far as fitment goes, this band has, this watch has a resin band, uh, has the typical Casio uh, pin and buckle. I'm not a real fan of the, intervals between the holes on the strap i think they should be a little closer together for a little more refined or fine tuning of the strap on your wrist i often find these casios either are a little bit too tight or a little bit too loose and it all comes down to the spacing of those holes um, the keeper is notched and also the strap is notched so the keeper really does a good job of staying put on the wrist on the on the strap so it's not sliding around on your strap the finish is black polymer it's a black plastic basically it's durable it's not a g-shock but i'll tell you what i have yet to find a casio that doesn't take some moderate to even harsh uh environments or harsh abuse um, if you're in you know construction and you're doing you know high impact type work or you know banging things around a lot um, first of all you're probably not wearing a watch like this but um, the G-Shock is probably going to be a better option for you. But other than that, I don't think this watch, I haven't found this watch anyway, to be one that really suffers from not being a, a G-Shock. Mineral crystal, yeah, it's going to get scratches. It's got a few scratches. Um, but that's just the way it is when it comes down to an everyday watch. Um, it's a simple Casio design. It's truly an everyday watch. And uh, I think this is, as far as finish goes, you'll be just fine. It is what it is. It's a $20 watch. Don't worry about it. The buttons on this is great. The button layout is the same uh, ty style type as the Royale. The distance between the buttons, you know, the, the, uh, the four corners of the watch, same basic layout as the Royale. So I think it, it does a great job there. Accuracy, I'm looking at about one second lost time per four days or so. So about seven seconds a month, which is, for me, I just think digital quartz watches should be more accurate than that. But, you know, it's it's in there. It's in, it's in the ballpark. Um, I do have a video coming out. It's called the Casio Shakedown, where I take the Casios that I have and I run them through a series of basically a torture test. Really cold temperatures, a lot of shock, a lot of, you know... A, somewhat abuse I, I, it's not like harsh abuse but it, there's some abuse to it so take a look at that video i'll be uh, putting a card up here once it's published if it's not up that means i haven't published that video yet um i think it handles shock well you're going to see a video I'll, I'll put a video up here where i do some pistol shooting like i'm a competitive pistol shooter and it handles the shock just fine i did a before and after uh, i set the time according to the uh, casio square the g-shock square and timed it and it came out just fine no no issues as far as uh, shock goes which is again going back to i i don't find casios 
are that vulnerable to shock unless you're really doing some heavy duty stuff, you know, like impact wrench kind of work, uh, a lot of hammering or for me, splitting firewood, those kind of things. Legibility and loom, excellent. The lar- this, this has the largest numbers of all the digital watches that I have. And I'll, I'll put a picture up here to show you what that looks like with the uh, Royale, the Square, and this watch. The light is good. Um, it's not great, but it's good. It has a single LED. It is a green color, which I like the green color. Easy to read. Um, the numbers on this, the date, the, it's really a, a legible, easy to read watch, which I think lends itself to the work that I do as far as lawn maintenance work. But I think it also lends itself to a lot of other jobs out there. And I'll get to that in a minute. Water resistance, no issues with water resistance, where it's swimming, bathing, you know, washing dishes, um, reaching into the washing machine to grab something. It's not going to be an issue at all. It's the scuba diving that's really going to really put the the 100 meters of water resistance to a test it has standard functions to it stopwatch alarm dual time and also i hacked into it a timer function i'll talk more about that here in just a second but let's go through the first three so the stopwatch is a pretty standard stopwatch the split time start stop reset the alarm you have just one alarm but you can set a daily alarm you can set uh, a recurring us snooze alarm where every five minutes the alarm goes off and you can also set the alarm for a specific day but just keep in mind that you only have one alarm to do that with i actually haven't found a lot of uses for having multiple alarms yet Um, i prefer to have if anything being able to set my alarm for a specific day i think that's a huge advantage over some of the other casios uh, alarm systems where they don't allow you to set for a specific day dual time pretty standard it's a second time zone if you want to send it set it up for a second time zone now the hacking piece with the timer go online and look there's a bunch of, of different videos on how to do this it's about a 15 minute job but you can take this watch and add the timer function to this watch And the timer function that you add to this watch includes a recurring timer, which means when the timer goes off, let's say you set it for five minutes, five minutes later, the the timer beeps go off, it automatically resets and starts another round. And you can turn that part of the timer function on and off. You can have a one-time use or a recurring use. And to me, that is a huge advantage, especially for some other uses that this watch i think lines up very nicely with and one of them is the medical field if you're doing rounds and you have a particular patient that you have to recurringly go back and check whatever the medication or you know it's uh, biometric data or whatever it is you, you can have a recurring timer that's set up to do this now the downside is because it is a hack there is no indicator saying that it's a recurring timer or a single use timer and so that's just something that it's it's Honestly, it's the press of one button, and it's either recurring or not. (laughs) So if you can handle that much of of the unknown, you're good to go. I think also another one is teachers. When it comes down to science labs, I think when you're doing testing, um, anything where you have intervals, you have something that you have to, to set up where it's every five minutes, every 15 minutes, 45 minutes, whatever it happens to be. It's a, it's a great feature that you don't have to think about. It automatically resets and starts the timer, starts counting down again. So there is no like, oh, I didn't hit the start button again, that kind of thing. So it's great that way for law enforcement. Another thing that I was a part of is a reserve deputy. Law enforcement patrolling a particular area. Let's say you're going back on multiple occasions to, to check up on an area. You can set that up. Um, I think the recommendation for me anyway is... Don't go with the, don't go back every five, 45 minutes. Vary it a little bit. Use the recurring timer as more of a reminder and not an automatic go back to a particular area to patrol again. So there's a lot of great features with this. Um, it has an okay light, very good uh, vi- uh, legibility, visibility of the watch. It's a cheap watch. It's an everyday watch, low replacement cost if you have any issues with it. It's not something that you have to worry about as far as camping goes. You can set up reminders if you go out on a hike, a day hike. You can set up reminders for certain points of your hike to make sure that you turn around or you hit a certain spot. And if you don't hit a certain spot, you know, you turn. Like, there's some things about this watch I think that will really lend itself to some good use. And it's like 20, 25 bucks. Well, there you have it. There's the review for the A800H. This Casio watch gets an 8 out of 10 if it's from the factory and a 9 out of 10 with the timer hack. The timer hack is invaluable for this watch. And with that hack, I think it actually has some qualities about it that may be preferable to the Square. It may be preferable to the the Royale. So 
There you have it. My name is Tim. This is another Real Ideal Gear Review. Leave any questions or comments or ideas down below. I'm grateful for your time for watching my videos, and we'll see you next time. cut off the uh, two by four that had the steel target on it so I gotta make an adjustment. <laughs> so what happens when you use a small steel target. I try to simulate a longer distance shot by using a smaller target which also means the two by four gets nicked a lot. <laughs>